So you probably heard of this wonderful character named Caladus Assassin, but do you actually need her in your Imperium list? Let's find out. So what is she? She's a 90 points lone operative character model that can join any Imperium faction in the game. And if you ask me, that's already a very good start. She also has Deep Strike, Threat First and the Infiltrators keywords. So if you're careful, you can forward deploy her and potentially kill a small objective holder infantry unit that your opponent has uh, before they get to react and uh, she also has a very nice flamer pistol with anti-infantry 2 plus and d6 shots at ap2 and it also has precision just as her melee profile which is five attacks at strength 5 ap4 damage 2 and has lethal hits so for 90 points she has some quite reliable and universal damage that she can put obviously nothing like uh, that can kill a tank or a monster, uh, but she can definitely threaten some uh, light or medium characters, even space marine characters at that. But her keywords are actually what we really need, because obviously Deep Strike is nice, you can put her in Deep Strike and she can still be very useful because of her other abilities, which we'll discuss later. Fight First is very good, because uh, she's a lone up, so she can be shot at by artillery unless the artillery is within 12, so she's relatively safe if you're playing against Astro Militarum with a bunch of uh, out of line of sight shooting. And if someone wants to charge her, they will have to pass through the five attacks, as we said before, at some height relatively high damage and uh, AP. And that's a nice safeguard against uh, maybe like a small unit of intercessors charging her. I'm really not sure that would be a good idea for the intercessors. And even the character hunting isn't her main task, and you should probably not be using her for that. You have Vindicare for that if you really want to go down that route, and you probably need more snipers anyways, which you have a lot of access to that in some Imperium factions. But she can still hunt down characters sometimes if her position on the board and she has a seven inch move so she can move relatively fast with her infantry keyword moving through through the buildings uh, but still I don't recommend to use her mainly for that she's mostly for other things it's just if your opponent isn't careful and leaves a wounded character somewhere on the back objective you can teleport there and maybe even finish them off with the anti-infantry shots from your pistol but her strong suit actually is her mobility and CP machination that she brings you can pick her up at the end of the opponent's turn and set her up nine inches away in your turn in at the end of your movement phase uh, as for example gray knights can that's a very strong ability to have especially if you don't have much of that mobility in your list otherwise it is incredible for secondaries and scoring in general because if she is somewhere on the board where there are no real targets at the end of your opponent's turn and that that means that everything has already happened your opponent has moved has charged has piled in consolidated so you know the position as it will be at the start of your turn and you can immediately start thinking do you want her to stay in that spot or you can just pick her up put her in dip strike or in the reserves and then set her up again in your turn and you should probably usually do that because then when in your command phase you draw your cards if you're playing tactical which you probably will be if you're playing cards and uh, you draw them you will see where you need to go with this character and she will probably be extremely valuable for your secondaries in most of your games yes yeah, she's not extremely durable she only has four wounds and uh four plus invulnerable save and i think she's t4 so nothing that cannot be killed however uh she still is a lone up so you are you have the full power to actually decide when she gets targeted or when she doesn't now the reign of confusion ability the cp manipulation so she can once per game even when she's not on the battlefield which is nice make a battle tactic strategy as per the new balance data slate cost one command point more for the rest of the game after the first use and as you can probably tell already that's very powerful for a character that's already arguably worth the price that the gw is asking for her CPs are very scarce in now in the game. There are only a couple of ways to manipulate uh, them, to gain them uh, in the, the game for each faction. Usually it's uh, by discarding the tactical card if they're playing tactical, or sometimes there's a character that gives you a command point, something like that, or an enhancement. But they are rare, and you can only get a maximum of one extra one per battle round still. So anything that can tap into that CP resource of your opponent and get some of that 
away will impact uh, the game tremendously. But what stratagem do you choose? That's the good question. And uh, first of all, you can always choose command point reroll because it's a battle tactic stratagem. And as far as I understand, there are no limitations uh, whether you can choose a core stratagem or a stratagem from someone's faction. So you can always use that. And it's not a bad option. It was a better option. Uh, it would be a better option, something like ninth edition, where we had more command points. So the command point reroll was a more often occurring thing. Uh, nowadays, people are very careful with spending CPs and they don't really reroll that often, but still there will be moments uh, that it's likely that well, there will be moments in the game where your opponent wants to use a CP later on and they cannot. So if you don't have a good option, just use it on the CP reroll and that will be fine. Remember, you will get your money's worth of Kaladis anyways, even without that ability. So messing with the command point reroll is still good. So the first thing that you have to look for is you know, the stratagems that your opponent really, really wants to use and preferably every turn and in multiple phases. This way you make sure that the disruption factor is at its maximum. Because obviously if you use that on a sprawlful stratagem, but something that your opponent will only use once and doesn't really care about and can easily get away without using it, then you've just wasted your ability on nothing. Because remember, it only works from the second use of the strategy. And another factor is its cost. The perfect case scenario is a two command point stratagem that your opponent wants to use multiple times in a battle round. Because this way you can actually get to a point where your opponent cannot use a stratagem because they don't have command points. They have two, but they may need three. But that will not always happen. So if you need to choose the most important factor, I would say the stratagems that your opponent really wants to use and the second part is the strategies that they, that they want to use in multiple phases and only then the cost because you can actually argue that the strategy that will cost go up to two cp from one is still kind of usable by your opponent and they will still want to go and try to use it but they will be actually uh, wasting a lot of command points uh, this way but if you go for the two command point strategy and they might just want to not use it anymore because uh, even if they have three CP, they'll think, oh, maybe it's too costly and I can uh, just get away without using it. And you don't want that uh, in most cases, unless that's a very, very necessary strategy. And that's up to your choice and the particular faction in question. And by the way, don't forget that I have a Patreon account. So if you want to support the channel and also want me to correct, fix and help you with your list and tournament prep, check out the link in the description and I'll do my best to help you win more games. Now, examples. So these are the cases where you don't want to use the Reign of Confusion on something that something like a command point reroll you want to use that on a faction strategy because it's just so good and will be used over and over again first arcane genetic alchemy for custodians for two command points first of all it's two command points also you uh, the opponent really wants to use it because uh, against damage two it's just wonderful against damage three guns or weapons it's also great because custodians most of them have three wounds the only thing that i don't really understand for now is uh, how it interacts with the captain's ability to use the strategy for zero command points do you have to pay one command point instead uh, because the price of the strategy went up by one i would assume so i've tried looking for something like priority but there is no priority rule for this kind of a situation there is reinforcement priority and attackers priority in the designer's commentary so not really sure how that works there i would my natural instinct would assume that you would pay one command point but don't quote me on that and you probably should ask your to about that Next, 1 CP Squire's Duty for Imperial Knights. Another uh, example of a very good strategy, and the opponent really wants to use that because it's strong. Uh, it works in both shooting and fight phases. So again, uh, there is something that the opponent will use multiple times, so you'll get your mileage out of Raven, a Reign of Confusion. And also, a lot of uh, lists are now running a couple, uh, several armagers, a lot of them usually. So they will again want to help their squires. Now, 1 CP Ferric Blight for Death Guard, and I have an asterisk there because they also have 2 CP Disgustingly Resilient Strategy, which minus one damage is very powerful, and they will want to use that, but it's only in melee, so that's why Ferric Blight is, I think, a better choice here in most cases, If especially if the AP really matters against your army, if you're not relying on the vulnerable saves much, which if you're playing Imperium, you probably are. If you're playing uh, Demons, I would say don't care about Ferric Blight, uh, and I think Demons have the 
same uh, CP manipulation uh, attribute. I think the Cypher model can do the same thing. So for demons, again, not something that you really want to care about, but for Imperium armies, Ferric Blight is bad, especially with Rattle Joy and Agu. Uh, in combination, it's it's a menace. Next, if you're playing Invasion Fleet Terranids, is then just press, double press, triple press the uh, Calidus button on the Rapid Regeneration because they will be using that stratagem over and over and over again uh, because it's just so good, the 5-up shrug uh, for the for the Eternian units, it, it will be used over and over again and it's, it's a perfect example of where you want to use the Vect uh, quote-unquote ability. All these abilities are commonly known as Vect because that's the first instance of, of this ability that we knew from some editions back. And one CP devastating sorcery for thousand suns again, uh, full rerolls to hit and wound for psychic weapons. That's just so good for uh, thousand suns guns, and uh, they will be uh, using that turn after turn, and will probably be, be still using that even though you've uh, increased the price for it. So just uh, keep that in mind if you're playing thousand suns, use that on the devastating sorcery. So is there someone who can skip her? Frankly, almost every faction in the Imperium will benefit from this 90-point character. It will be incredibly difficult to substitute her with anything because that's just a lot of efficiency for 90 points. Uh, Grey Knights are an army that I initially thought that you can probably skip her because just Grey Knights have so much of their own ability that they probably don't need another 90 points jumping around. But frankly, they also need the CP restrictions a lot, especially again playing against some of those factions that have introduced in the examples so i think even green knights need her and if you're playing anything else anything very slow and uh, that doesn't have a lot of small units that can run around jump around and do scoring for you consider all of your 2000 points list to actually start at 1910 and you will probably not regret it so do you think that the caladis is something that imperium factions really need all of them or would you substitute her with maybe another assassin i'm really interested to hear your opinion and i hope this video was useful for you and i'll see you next time